When she was just eight years old, Jade Simmons thought her purpose in life was to play piano. She dreamed of huge concert halls, gorgeous gowns, and world-class symphonies. Years later, Jade had achieved all her dreams, only to find out that playing piano was not her purpose after all. Author Jade Simmons is a classically trained pianist whose music spans from classical to rap. She delivers her stunning live performances in concert halls, corporations, colleges, and churches. For many years, Jade thought her talent was her life's purpose until she discovered her true identity. In her book, Purpose the Remix, she shares how to uncover God's intention for your life so you can live with purpose and become who you were designed to be. All right, well, please welcome to the 700 Club, Jade Simmons. Jade, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Ashley, for having me. Of course. Okay, well, let's go back to yeah. your eight-year-old self. <laughs> That's when you started taking piano lessons. Yeah. Okay, talk a little bit about that, and when did becoming a concert pianist become your dream? Well, the problem was it was already my dream by the wow. time I got to the first lesson. And oh I say the problem because... At that age of eight years old, believe it or not, that's pretty old in the world of classical music. Yeah. So the problem was that I came into that first lesson hearing all the Mozart and the Beethoven and thinking that's what I was going to play on the first day, and that was wow. not the case. Wow. <laughs> so what, what happened? Well, you know, most of us who've ever had piano lessons, you remember those beginner books that are just drudgery and they're so boring <laughs> and... I played out of this book in the first lesson and I was just horrified that I was thinking this is this is not what I want to do. I want to mm. play Beethoven. But my teachers, my early teachers insisted that I play out of these books, you know, mm. one page at a time. Well, it's <laughs> interesting because the your first two teachers, I mean, they would get you through these books and then they passed away. So, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's crazy. We don't have a ton of time to get into the story and all the context, but you know, I, I joke that, you know, after a few months of working out of these beginner books. Both of my teachers passed away, so I always say I had sort of a reputation, right? Like the black <laughs> widow of, of piano students. So when I got to that third teacher, I was gonna do things differently, and mm. I told her, listen, I don't wanna play out of these beginner books. Yeah. I really want something new. And I thought for incentive, I would tell her what had happened to the other two teachers, <laughs> just to kind of push her along a little bit. Uh, she gave me my first Mozart, my first Beethoven. Wow. Um, after a few years, she passed me to another teacher who would be the one who took me on to really be able to perform at a level wow. to get into college and conservatory. Uh, and so everything changed with that third teacher. The third teacher, yeah. wow, third time's a charm. It <laughs> is, and I always tell audiences, you can be that third gateway wow. that really opens the door for people who've been knocking for a long time. They can see destiny, they can see mm -hmm. purpose, but they're having trouble getting from one place to the next. Wow. Well, I mean, fast forward, you achieved your dream, right? A lot of you, them. A lot yeah. of them, for sure. But there was something your husband <sighs> said to you that really just, I mean, shifted things for you. Yeah. What did he say to you? <sighs> well, you know, I'm married to my high school sweetheart. So we've been Aww. together since we were 15. So this That's man amazing. has seen me through all the different iterations, all the hairstyles, <laughs> right? And uh, he said something that was crazy at the time. He said, you know, I don't think the piano is going to be your thing. And you know, when someone tells you that, you're wow. like, wait a minute, have you not been with me yeah. all these years? Like, the piano yeah. is the only thing. Yeah. He quickly clarified when he saw the rabid look in my eyes, right? And he <laughs> said, no, what I'm trying to say is that I believe the piano will be the thing that opens the doors mm. to different places. And, and if yeah. I'm being honest, I don't know if I could receive that mm. when I first heard it. But I'll tell you what, it was prophetic. Wow. Because just as the Word of God says, right, your gift will make room for you. Well, it's made space for me in unexpected rooms and wow. in front of ex unexpected people making an impact that's much broader than what I would have had mm -hmm. uh, if I'd gotten my original dream, which yeah. was solely to be a concert pianist. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, after that conversation, after that kind of like change of thinking, you began yeah. to actually change the way you performed. Yeah, and that came over time. You know, it's easy to tell these stories in a nutshell and make it sound like really uncovering your identity is, is an overnight thing. But mm -hmm. over time, really what I was doing was connecting more with the audience. I started speaking to the audience in between the music. Yeah. I started adding multiple genres of music. And as I shifted, the audience shifted. Classical music's known for being kind of a, a staid, sometimes people will say stale mm -hmm. or traditional, um, you know, atmosphere. And today I'm known as classical music's number one maverick. Wow. I have really multicultural audiences mm -hmm. who've come from 
different backgrounds. And today my concerts span uh, Rachmaninoff, which we'll hear today, yes, yes. all the way to rap, believe yes, it or not. I love so that. it's so been cool. fun shaking things up. And I believe, mm -hmm. you know, God's called us to be disruptive in yeah. a powerful way. And so I've been able to disrupt in that space and it's created uh, an opportunity to impact in ways that I never thought possible. That's amazing. Well, your book is called Purpose the Remix, yeah. a mind-blowing re-understanding of how purpose, of purpose and how it works. Talk about your definition of purpose sure. because so many of us, Christians especially, mm -hmm. we can get caught up in what's my purpose, what's my calling. Yeah. But you define it very beautifully, and I think it takes the pressure off of constantly trying to figure that out. Oh, what I'm is glad that? you caught that. That's exactly the reason behind the definition. I say that your purpose is not the thing you do. Mm. It's the thing that happens in others when you do what you yeah. do. So yes, we get to have a talent or a skill or an ability, uh, but your purpose isn't caught up in being a host mm -hmm. of a television show. It's yep. what happens to the viewers and the listeners who are listening as you speak. And I believe that God anoints our voices to yeah. uh, really be able to speak and impact a set amount of ears. There's a frequency mm. uh, that our voices vibrate on. And that's why we as parents, you know, we can say something over and over and over mm -hmm. and our kids don't get it. Yeah. And then some guest speaker comes in <laughs> and it's like they walk on water you're like, and you're like, I've been, I've been saying, saying that. this, right? So, I, but I think it's that's because uh, when we realize that God has given us not just a talent, but an effect, yeah. uh, that's what purpose really is, that breakout yeah. effect that we have on others. Absolutely. Well, you also talk about how people can get pushed out of their purpose. Oh yeah. How is that? Well, there's a couple of things, you know, right when you really uncover, and I always say you don't discover purpose, it's always been there. Mm. When you start uncovering it, you start to glow. And if we're not careful, people can go, oh my gosh, can we use you for this? Or can we use you for that? And people start to get their own dreams and ideas mm -hmm. for how to use you. And we have to be so uh, protective of what God has given us and really say, just because I can do something or I'm mm -hmm. obligated to do it, is this my purpose to do it in this season? So we have mm -hmm. to be careful that once we uncover purpose, we're saying yes to things that have purpose in it. Yeah, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, last thing really quickly, sure. what do you want readers to take away from your book, Purpose the Remix? Just that purpose has always been operating in you. Our job now is to uncover the effect we've always been having, sometimes since youth, and now we get to intentionally move forward, operating in purpose, on purpose. Mm. Absolutely love that, Jade. Thank you so, so thank much you for, for, having for me. this. And you're staying with us because we're you're actually going to perform, which is going to be amazing. Jade's book is called Purpose the Remix, and it's available nationwide.